In Halo 5, we had this odd exchange between Buck and Locke. You're not the only one here because of him. In this video, I want to do a deep dive into this to learn more why Locke hates the Master Chief. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, give you an informative video when it comes to Halo, a little bit about the lore and stuff like that. So if you like this kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button, let me know you want to see some more content like this. So let's get right into the video here. So Spartan Luck is an interesting character, not really the character himself, I mean more of his place within the Halo story overall. In Halo 5, he seemed to really be a character that's designed for one single purpose. That purpose is to find Master Chief. Within that hunt for Chief, we had this one interesting line. You're not the only one here because of him. And that tone of that line, it sounded rather resentful. This isn't touched within the story of Halo 5 at all. So I wanted to take a deeper look and find out why Spartan Locke hates the Master Chief and how he could be possibly tied into Halo Infinite. So to understand Locke's hatred towards the Master Chief and the UNSC, we have to look into his tragic past of Locke himself. Born on the human colony of Jericho 7 on March 15, 2529, Locke was orphaned when the Covenant invaded his homeworld in 2535, being evacuated from Jericho 7 only minutes before its glassing by the Covenant. During the Human Covenant War, Jericho 7 was found and attacked by the Covenant as early as 2532. The planet was glassed via orbital bombardment in a final stages of the battle for Jericho 7 in 2535. Remember that Halo CE through Halo 3 takes place between 2552 to 2553. So this takes place well before the events of the mainline story for the Halo trilogy. Devin, why are you telling me about the battle of Jericho 7? Well, Master Chief was on that planet right before the glassing. On the ground, blue team members, Master Chief Kelly and others massacred Covenant troops. Blue Team's mission was to draw out the Covenant rear guard so Red Team could slip behind their lines and plant a Havoc tactical nuke, hoping to destroy the Covenant ship that landed. All the Spartan teams accomplished their missions and returned safely to the remaining fleet in a Pelican dropship. Unfortunately, the UNSC fleet lost control of the space around Jericho 7 after the brutal three-day battle with the Covenant fleet. However, Captain de Blanc was able to evacuate the Spartans aboard the UNSC Resolute before the Covenant fleet began its glassing of the planet. At the end of the battle, Master Chief asked Captain de Blanc for permission to watch Jericho 7 being glassed, in a moment of solidarity, if I assume properly. A large number of orphans from this planet enlisted for the Spartan 3 program. After losing everyone he had known, Locke was placed in a state orphanage with other children who had suffered a similar fate. Blaming the government for their failure to defend his homeworld, Locke came to the conclusion that the UNSC is incapable of protecting its citizens. As a result, he became a freelance tracker and assassin. Locke's atypical behavior and questionable allegiances eventually caught the eye of the Office of Naval Intelligence, aka ONI, who planned to train Locke into a specific role within their organization. Seeking a greater purpose in life, Locke accepted Oni's offer to join and entered their extensive training program where he honed his skills to perfection and became one of Oni's top field operatives, serving Section 3 as an acquisitions specialist. That's quite the political term for that, <laughs> that role right there. Uh, I, you know, that's pretty much official assassination bounty hunter. I do find it rather odd that Locke would join Oni even though he has a pretty strong opinion about the UNSC and again, them not be able to serve and protect their people. Though knowing the resources Oni has, I could imagine that being very tempting for Locke to understand that you know, he can keep on doing these small jobs or he can go for the big leagues and join Oni. And also keep in mind that yeah, even though Oni is part of the UNSC, they are separate entities. And the UNSC as a whole does kind of have a hands-off approach when it comes to Oni. They kind of let them do their own thing. They don't really look into their stuff a whole lot. As long as Oni kind of stays under the radar and a bit hush-hush on their operations, the UNSC doesn't really bother with Oni too much. This next section here, it kind of goes into Locke becoming a Spartan and eventually his paths crossing with Master Chief, who is basically the embodiment 
of his childhood hatred. In 2556, Locke was selected to become a Spartan IV. Just two years later, by October of 2558, he had been assigned to lead Fireteam Osiris, comprised of Spartan IVs, Olympia, Vale, Edward Buck, and Holly Tanaka. Fireteam Osiris was charged with carrying out a variety of complex missions for the UNSC, Security Council, and High Command. Though that same month, Locke and Fireteam Osiris were tasked with tracking down Master Chief and Blue Team as they were absent without leave to investigate the smart AI Cortana's location. So they were sent to the human colony world of Meridian. While exploring the area, Vale discovered a local slip space translocation network throughout the caverns of Meridian and noticed Blue Team using it in the platforms above. Following Vale, Locke, and the rest of Osiris pursued Blue Team as they advanced from platform to platform utilizing the translocation network. Locke got ahead of the rest of the fire team and was teleported to the same platform as Blue Team. And so there was Locke staring down the man who he blamed for so many years of pain and anger, the embodiment of the UNSC that failed to save his homeworld, his friends, and his family. Locke attempted to detain Chief, leading to a hand-to-hand -hand combat fight between the two, while the rest of Osiris awkwardly watched nearby. Chief eventually gained the upper hand and used Locke's own armor-locking device against him, giving Chief the time to escape through the portal. So knowing this context of Locke does provide a lot more weight to the situation of that hand-to-hand -hand combat situation. This is something that Halo 5 really struggled with, was trying to provide better context to situations. And like the action scenes were pretty cool. Uh, the stuff that you did in the game was pretty cool, but or what? Why am I here? Why are we doing this? And it just didn't really gel very well with everything going on. It just kind of threw you into a situation with no explanation and no context. So it made the actions of the characters seem rather random and without consequence. Eventually, Locke was able to put aside his issues with Chief as he saw Cortana as the greater threat. A sort of seek the enemy of my enemy and you'll find a friend kind of situation. And we all kind of know what happened with the rest of Halo 5. Well, that was a bit of a brief history review of Locke and that situation between Halo 5 and understanding that context just give you a better weight to the situations that happen within the game itself. Now, this also begs the question, what about Locke in Halo Infinite? Is he gonna be in the game? Locke's last known location is on actually the UNSC Infinity as he's part of the book Bad Blood. But where is Locke right now between Halo 5 and Halo Infinite and could he actually be in the game? There is some information that we actually have about Locke's potential part in Halo Infinite. The book Bad Blood, as a bit of an epilogue part of the book, it showcases Locke in a bar in the UNSC the bar the full moon with the rest of team osiris and then alpha 9 team aka the team that was part of halo 3 odst buck's team walks in and after having a few talks and sharing a few stories veronica dare actually walks in and dares buck to marry her on the spot and roland actually officiated the event so osiris and alpha 9 were able to witness the event together well Locke and the unsc infinity are tied into halo infinite story in some way or another Currently, all we know is sometime near 2560, several dozen forces from different branches originating from the Infinity were killed in combat either on or near Installation 07, as shown in the gameplay reveal. So this leaves 343 with multiple routes they can take or unlock in the story. One, we know that Infinity was involved with the Battle of Zeta Halo, and Locke's last known location is on that ship. Number two, Locke could have been part of that Battle of Zeta Halo and maybe have died with hints of Hyperius wearing Locke's helmet as a toy reveal, I mean Locke also could have just lost the helmet within the battle and Hyperius might have found it, put it on just kind of as a badge of honor kind of thing. Uh, number three here, Locke and Infinity are out somewhere in the galaxy either retreating, recovering, planning, or something, but maybe not directly tied into the events of Halo Infinite's story, at launch at least. Also for that lock in the UNSC Infinity could all just be dead and gone. In my opinion, I think that Infinity retreated from the battle of Installation 07, Locke is alive, but probably won't make an appearance in Halo Infinite due to the fans not really liking the character as a whole. Halo Infinite being a Master Chief-focused story and bringing in another Spartan 
would really kind of muddy up the chief focus story. As Locke and Chief are physical equals, and the only thing is that Chief has on Locke is the military and reputation rank. Unless Locke comes to Chief as more of a subordinate rather than an equal like in Halo 5, there are many ways 343 can go with the character of Locke. Anyways though, we'll just honestly have to wait and see until we get further details. If you like this kind of informative lore videos, make sure to tap that like button, let me know you want to see more content like this, and leave a comment what your thoughts are and what you might want to see next. And a huge thank you to Halo Pita, which provided a lot of information to go into the details of of the topic of this video, so please check out the description for the links below. What do you think of Spartan Locke, and do you expect to see him in Halo Infinite? Leave it in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel and miss any content for me, check out the videos on the screen right here. I've got a link to all my news and informational videos. We've been on the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.